for sure. <laughs> ah. Let me know if we're running, start. Yeah, you did running, brother. We running. All right, man. All right, Max. Yo, thanks for being on, man. Of course, man. We're Happy just to gonna here. we're just gonna have a conversation. Yeah. Just for everybody that uh, doesn't know, me and Max have known each other since I moved here. I, I think I met you almost right away at the gym, okay. 2014. Okay. I came here in the fall. So eight, almost eight years. Since no one really knows maybe of who's gonna watch, just a little introduction. Sure, yeah. Where you're from, what you do, that sort of thing. Well, yeah, I'm uh, Maxwell Carlisle. You can call me Max. Yeah. And I'm originally from the Seattle area. I've lived in Los Angeles since 2007, so quite a while. I moved down here for a lot of things. Uh, bodybuilding was a big one. Okay. And then also, uh, when I moved to LA, it was a very um, kind of uh, a, a point of where I needed to make a decision in terms of music. Because I had this idea to move to Los Angeles, Venice Beach specifically, right? Because of Bobby Old's Beach. Gym, the Mecca, all that. But at, at that time, I moved down and I said, okay, you know, because I, I played guitar since I was a teenager, right? And other instruments before that. But when I moved to LA, I was like, okay, I, the best musicians in the world are in LA. If I'm going to continue to be a musician, I, I either need to really take it seriously or just forget it. Yeah. Right? Because I don't want to be a mediocre L you know, musician in LA. Right. right. Started taking my music a lot more seriously. And uh, of course, you know, bodybuilding continued, continued, went through this weird, uh, you know, that sort of phase you go through when you move somewhere new that's been hyped up. Yeah. And then you live there and you're like, oh, this isn't what I <laughs> expected. Right. Yeah. Bodybuilding has become, I, I don't want to say it's less important, but it's not as immediate of a goal mm -hmm. for me now. Uh, and music has kind of, you know, were you were you bigger I, uh, back then oh, when yeah, you yeah. Yeah? Yeah, yeah what what I was a good twenty pounds heavier than I am now yeah yeah for sure yeah. I, I even when I moved uh, I remember you being a little bigger than yeah, you are today sure yeah yeah so yeah yeah because when we met I was I was still you know all in you know. yeah the full the 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 mohawk, mohawk man like up yeah, here yeah, I remember yeah. that yeah that mohawk was that took a lot of dedication <laughs> I don't I I mean I don't really miss it yeah, yeah. <laughs> how long would it take you to like get it all done up. You know, getting it going was, I mean, it was a variety of, like, sometimes it would be 20 minutes, sometimes it would be an hour, just depending on, like, if it was fighting you, you know, <laughs> it was like it was alive or something. But I got to the point where I couldn't drive anywhere. Like, I'd get in my car and my hair would be hitting the top of the roof. Yeah. And I'd have to, like, stick my head out the window. Commitment. With a, with a mohawk, <laughs> like, out the window, like, driving someplace, like, in the rain, you know, and it was, Yeah. But, so, but everybody, you know, then you'd show up someplace and be like, oh, sick mohawk, dude. So Definitely yeah. stood out. Yeah. How'd you, I don't think I ever asked you this, how'd you end up at Gold's NoHo? Oh, well, about, um, so I, I, when I first moved to LA, I lived in Venice Beach area, Venice area. Um, and I lived there until around 2013, 2014. Oh, wow. Okay. And then I moved to Van Nuys, which was a dark time in my life. <laughs> Um, but when I moved there, you know, I, I was going to Venice schools for a long time, but then it ended up being like an hour drive to get to the gym. Mm. So I'm like, okay, well, Gold's Gym, North Hollywood is right, you know, close by. So I started going there. Yeah. yeah. And also Dan Fine. Yeah. I've, I've known him for a long time and he was at North Hollywood Gold's. Yeah. Cause he was still competing. I think at that time, I, yeah. I believe. Yeah. He was doing master's stuff yeah. and that kind of thing. Yeah. You talk about taking your, your musicianship more serious what, what what were you doing to do that at that point like i said i played guitar from when i was a little kid but uh, like my dad played guitar that kind of thing but i kind of really got into it when i was maybe like 15 i started jamming with other you know uh, school friends and that kind of thing but i only got as good as i needed to be to play whatever song i was going to play mm. that was my thing i never pushed myself beyond what was required of me, right? And so when I started taking it more seriously in you know 2008, basically, I said, okay, I need to, I need to practice. Yeah. You know, I need to I need my skills to be more than just whatever is you know called upon because I feel like if you're going to be somebody that creates, right? If you're going to do your own music, that kind of thing, you have to have a lot of tools available yeah. to you. And it's not enough to just be like, well, 
I played this song and it had these four chords in it, and so that's all I know, and I'm going to try and write a whole album with those four chords. Like, that's really limiting. Yeah. Yeah, so I just I started working on my chops, you know, practicing, uh, you know, watching a lot of videos. I'd go to, like, guitar clinics and, you know, be the dork asking questions about, you know, some kind of weird music theory thing or something. And, but that was, that was the point where I really started investing a lot more time in practicing, that kind of thing. Um, so how did you go about like infiltrating the scene here when you first moved out here? Yeah, man, it was like, um, you know, networking is such a huge part of it. Going to shows, meeting to people, uh, meeting people, going to shows and so forth. And, uh, you know, I think I had like, I put out Craigslist ads, that kind of <laughs> stuff. Like, hey, I want to play German power metal or, you know, something really obscure. Yeah. Right? And, you know, and I, and I met people through that and to be totally honest the first people i met were not uh it it was n never gonna work out yeah. with those people but that got me enough uh i mean it got me it got, got me a lot of things it got me experience working with other people in la in bands and then you know you meet one person and that guy knows four other people and you meet them and you meet people at rehearsal studios and and the guy who runs the rehearsal studio he's like hey man you should check out da 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 they rehearse here too they're looking for a guitarist you know you start just opening up a lot of opportunities and doors just by meeting more people and you know being friendly yeah. and and uh you know striking up conversations with people that's really how it how it got started i was in um very you know, like short lived band like we never even did a show we had a few rehearsals uh, in a metal band called Lightning Lord, okay. which I love the name. I'm like, oh, this is going to be great. <laughs> At one point, the singer had an idea where we were going to build a medieval catapult. <laughs> and we were going to have this thing on stage with us. Oh, shit. And we would go to the store ahead of time and buy a bunch of, like, steaks and, like, meat. And we were going to launch steaks and meat into the crowd from the catapult. What's that? And that man? was his big contribution to. Did oh, but y'all say y'all never did it. No, we oh. never actually did. I mean, we're not. I mean, who's gonna do that? You know? But like, <laughs> actually, there's yeah. this band. I, you may remember. I, I don't know if it was Wasp or some. They did that shit. Like I was just reading a book Maybe the other war. day. No, bro, it's no? here in L.A. Okay. Like '80s. Okay. I forgot what band. Okay. But they. It could have been Wasp. They. Yeah. They literally were throwing raw meat. Yeah. At the crowd. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's wild. Yeah, this dude just, he wanted to take it a step <laughs> further, man. You know, get, get it to the people in the back of the venue. <laughs> Catapult that. Yeah. But well, it's, yeah, I mean, it's, I think, I think a lot of things are like that. You go to a new place, sometimes the first people that you meet, the first people that go out of their way to come up to you, those aren't always the people that you're going to end up working with, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. What would you say, what were your influences as a musician? Uh, guitarist and that's just music lover. What, what would you say were your influences? So my earliest influences were all classic rock bands and when I say classic rock I'm talking like with the Rolling Stones. Yeah, that kind of stuff because that was what my dad listened to mm. right my dad played guitar Although it was more folk music uh, But he was uh, m my dad and my uncle his brother. They were you know songwriters in the 70s they lived in LA and were like trying to write songs for other artists in the 70s didn't really work out you know long term but uh, they were I mean, my dad in particular he was really just into that kind of I guess 60s 70s rock yeah. right and so that's what I that was kind of the soundtrack in the house growing up so that had a huge influence on me and then later on I found I guess more aggressive metal that attracted you more? Yeah, that attracted me more. There was something about the, the there's a there's a lot of optimism in metal music. Yeah. A lot of power, a lot of energy, and that really that really drew me in a lot. And and that's that's really the stuff today that I think is is my core influences. But there's there's a sort of melodic sense that you get from all that classic stuff. Yeah. And that has never left me. You know, I still am drawn towards catchy songs, you know, things with a strong melody, that kind of stuff. Similar with me too, with guitar, like, you know, people like Slash and those mm -hmm. very prolific, almost bluesy players. At that point, like, I work backwards. I'm like, okay, like, what, what were their influences? And same thing, you know, right. like that sort of classical yeah. sound and that, uh, I was like, okay, well, that's, 
I need to learn that. Yeah. Did you take uh, lessons? I know you said your dad played, um, or how did you learn? Yeah, so my dad played guitar and he taught me, my dad and my uncle, Pat, Patrick, they taught me my first basic chords, you know, your A chord, this kind of stuff. I think my dad taught me bar chords, which is like, you know, you can play a chord the same shape anywhere on the neck, which was, as a kid, that was like impossible to do, <laughs> right? But that, that was a really valuable thing. Um, so yeah, the first few basic things uh, w was learned from family. I did take lessons for about six months when I was in high school from a guy who was also in high school, but he was like a year ahead of me. Yeah. And he was, you know, he, he was the guitar player in the jazz band in okay. high school. And yeah. so I took lessons from him for about six months. And so he taught me like scales and, and the, the first sort of like formal teaching, yeah. right? But that was only about six months, and other than that, I've taken like one or two or three lessons from people here and there over the years, just like particular guys that I really wanted to learn from. Uh, but beyond that, it's all been, you know, self-study basically, which in this day and age, you know, that's, you can do that. Yeah. Yeah. Did you, did you have like this sort of aha moment with your playing? I know for me it came, because at first it's like, I was frustrated because I wanted a solo, mm -hmm. but it's like, it didn't make sense to me yet. And, and same thing, I, I took just basic lessons of just major minor chords from like the worship leader guitarist. But I know for me, one day I just had an aha moment of like just messing around and I, I had a little bitty acoustic guitar and I just happened to play something up lower and then the same thing without trying to down higher on the neck. Mm. And I was like, oh. yeah octaves right? yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it blew my mind yeah. i'm like oh so then i started messing around and putting it together to how to solo and that for me was like whoa a, a mind-blowing moment did you have anything like that along your path of learning guitar yeah i did i mean there was one particular sequence that i was practicing over and over again and it was just something where it was easy to understand the way the notes laid out on the guitar but playing it fast to where you could really blaze through it, it just, it was eluding me. And I was like burning hours and hours and hours, like trying to get this pattern down to where I could really shred through it. It was like, if you could, it, it was one of these things where it's like, if I could learn this and really nail it, then I knew that all this other stuff was going to be open to me. Yeah. But I wasn't sure that I could do it. Right. So it, it, it was, it was one of these moments where I'm like, trying to decide like maybe only some people can do this and maybe I'm not one of those people, right? But then after, yeah, just like spending, you know, every afternoon for like four weeks, you know, just sitting in my apartment, you know, studio apartment in Venice, just, you know, brrr, you know, going like that. And I finally like got through it a couple times when it was like perfect and just just blazing and I'm like fuck I did it yeah. you know and so it wasn't just that I had learned that one particular pattern but it it suddenly it seemed like all like I was capable of doing all these other things that I wanted to gave do. you confidence exactly yeah. so you moved out to LA you kind of break into the scene um, what was like the next big step for you after that yeah so about 2010 2011 uh, there was a pretty, it was a pretty cool thing. I was, you know, I had done some like solo music and this like failed Lightning Lord band. <laughs> and so I'd been like jamming with people and I'd done, I'd done a few shows kind of with my own music. And then there was a guy that I knew who had given me a couple lessons and he was in a band and it's a band, I, band's not really around anymore, it's, it was called Death Riders. Mm. And the main claim to fame of that band is the singer is the original Anthrax singer. Okay. It's a guy named Neil Turbin, he's like on the first Anthrax album. And so this was his sort of like modern day band. And there were two guitar players in the band and one dude quit or got fired or whatever. And the other guy in the band, the other guitar player, was this guy that I'd taken a couple lessons from. And so he called me and he's like, hey, you know, this band's looking for a guitarist. I think you could do it. You know, why don't you come down and, and, you know, we'll try it out. And it was, it was one of these things where like, oh, and by the way, we've got a show in four days, right? <laughs> it's one of those situations. Yeah. 
So I had to like learn all these, uh, like it was like thrash, you know, thrash metal stuff. I had to learn all these parts. You know, I made a bunch of mistakes and stuff, but I, I became the guitarist in that band. And then I was like, okay, now I don't have to book the shows myself. Like it was a, it was a much better position where other people were taking care of things for the band, you know, and we played more interesting shows and a, like a bigger variety of venues and that kind of stuff. I was only in the band for about a year. Mm. There was, it was a complicated, complicated band. The singer has a reputation of being difficult to work with. He, uh, he used to talk about how he's, he's very, you can see how he's confused about this, but he used to talk about how he's very proud of the fact that he's never fired anybody, but there, like a hundred people have been in the band. <laughs> So like everyone, quits. everybody's cool. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. And and he didn't see that as a problem, but <laughs> it was hilarious. But ba like basically, there was a a tour that the band had in Europe, mm. like England or something like that. And it was like th not real, like three weeks or something like that. I wasn't gonna be able to go because like I still had a day job. I couldn't get out of it and this kind of thing. So there was like a dude, somebody new in Europe, and so he was gonna fill in for me. And so they did the tour, and when they came back from the tour the entire band quit like they were just like you know they were everybody had gotten in fights with each other wow. and it, was, it just the band kind of imploded yeah and so the band kind of dissolved for a while after that so and then i went on to other things and the band kind of they got together later on with new members and that, that kind of stuff and what was funny is over this was like like 2011 mm -hmm. over the next like 10 years i kept randomly running into people who had also played in that band, but at yeah, different quit. times. Yeah. So, and yeah, everybody quit, you know? <laughs> so it was just, I don't know, it was a very, you know, very LA thing. I wish I could make a documentary about it. <laughs> yeah. Do you have a, what's like one of your wild, maybe Hollywood stories or maybe gig thing? Do you have any crazy story about any, any gigs like that? Oh, a lot of them, man. <laughs> I mean, so that, that show, well, not, not, not that band, I should say, had a show and it was at a music store in East LA. And I, don't, I wish I could remember the name of the store, but it wasn't like a guitar center. It was like a independent store, right? Mm -hmm. But it was a big place. And what they did is they would clear everything out of the center of the store. And they set up a little, like a kind of a short stage that the band would be on. And then everybody would come in and you, and they, I don't know, they had like a bunch of bands playing and Death Riders was playing. And uh, so, you know, they got through a bunch of bands and then we went on and it's a thrash show. So people are moshing yeah. right? in a music store. How many people showed up about? Maybe like 60, 70, okay. something like that. So it wasn't big, but it was in a for tiny the space store. it was in. Yeah, yeah. It's, it was too many people. <laughs> and like if they'd been well behaved, it would have been one thing, but they weren't. A couple things happened in the mosh, you know, the pit was gone. And some dude, like a big dude, you know, got like thrown out of the pit up onto the stage and he hit me and he, and he pushed and I mean, he didn't like hit me, but he just got thrown into me and he pushed me backwards, like into my amplifier and everything. And he landed on my pedal board. And so he destroyed, he like ripped up a bunch of the cables on my pedal board and pushed me back into the amp and like fucked up my guitar and the amp went over backwards, like oh, all this wow. stuff, right? And so it was like, oh, and the singer's getting all pissed off and everything, I'm like, what, what the fuck are you guys doing? You know, he was real bad at like calming the crowd down. Yeah. And, but we're like, I'm like, okay, it's okay, it's okay. So I plugged some shit back in. I had to like bypass some things on my pedal board that got messed up and we kept playing. The pit kept going. And what happened was because they had cleared out everything in the, middle of the room they'd taken all the guitars and stuff that would be in the middle they put them on the back like behind like the counter okay. right so they had this big display counter they put everything behind that so the pit really got going a bunch of dudes got pushed into the counter which was glass uh. okay they pushed the counter completely over and so they pushed it over onto everything that they had been trying to protect like behind the counter yeah. And so it broke the glass. A dude got cut like in the head pretty bad. And so he's all like bleeding and everything <laughs> down his face. And they, and they just like destroyed, like snapped the necks on all these guitars that were behind the counter oh, and everything. And it just like, and then when that happened, you know, 
it was like, okay, show, show's over, you know? Wow. Yeah. And of course, th there were still a couple other bands that were going to play afterwards. And they're just like, no, man, keep it going. <laughs> we got to finish the they, show. They cut it but, off. Yeah, the people who owned it were just like, no, it's, it's done. You know. Man, you got you. You do a lot of uh, filming and yeah. photography now. Yeah. When I first met you, I didn't. I just knew you as the guitarist, right. and I was like, once I started getting to know you, I was like, man, this cool. Dude, you know, he's a cool dude, and he lives and all this stuff. Talk about a little bit of how you got into more photography and film, or what was the inspiration behind that? I had been doing. I had been focusing mostly on music for a few years, and I wasn't really interested in doing anything else. And kind of a funny thing, just to step back a little bit, when I first moved to LA, I, in like 2008, I had made some YouTube videos, which is like pretty early YouTube, right? Yeah. And like kind of doing what I'm doing now where I'm playing guitar and this kind of stuff. Uh, but I had this very, I had this very like negative attitude towards playing guitar on the internet, mm -hmm. right? And I'm like, I don't want to be one of those guys who's like sitting in my bedroom you know, just playing guitar for the camera, and then I don't do real gigs. That was my attitude back then. And so I deliberately stopped doing that, and I'm like, yo, I'm going to go play metal in L.A., and I, and I did that. But after a few years, I, st I started thinking, I'm like, you know, I feel like that was a missed opportunity, mm -hmm. which of course it was, okay. And so around 2015, I think, I started getting back more into doing video stuff. So I bought a, a camera, you know, a, a DSLR that I got exclusively for doing video stuff, just for filming my own videos. And I started using that. I had that for a while. And then I, I was like looking at the camera one day. I'm like, this is really like a camera for photos. This is what these were designed for. I'm like, I should learn how to use it for that. Yeah. Because I'd never done anything with that. Uh, I never done any photos with that camera, and so I started doing that, and I started talking to people like, "Hey, you know, can I can I take some photos of you, please? You know, <laughs> uh, just so I can practice and this kind of stuff." And I and I started doing some of that. Some of the first people that I did were people that I knew through North Hollywood, yeah, Golds, right? You know, some of it was like fitness stuff, and some of it was like music and that kind of thing. And I really enjoyed it. I got more into it, and it was kind of you know, there's some overlap. So the more you learn about one thing, it gives you better skills for other things too. And I, yeah, and I, and I got more into that. And then around, you know, maybe a couple of years after that, I had a buddy, a guitar player, and he had been making videos of himself. And, in I thought that they were real bad. I'm like, yeah. this is just looks real cheesy and this kind of thing. And so I said, Hey, can I please make a video for you? You know, next time you do a song, let me shoot the video for it. He's like, yeah, sure. You know, and so I did that, and that was the first, like, music video that I made for somebody else. Yeah. And that got me. And it's all of this stuff, like, I try it, and it starts out of necessity, and then I end up enjoying it. Yeah. Right? And that's how, it's, that's how it's gone over the years with all of this stuff. And obviously, I've done a lot of, you know, tough yeah. stuff for you I, I remember, and other people. Yeah. I remember that, like, not specifically, but I remember that period when I started to see more of like the camera with you and mm -hmm. we talk because I, I remember we talk a lot there at the front desk and things like that and so I got to know you and then yeah it was 2016 and uh and I was like man let me hit him up let's just shoot and like mm -hmm. since then we just like it just kept progressing and us working together how did how did it transition from just learning it and doing that to like then applying to really what you do now in your channel it's very easy oh, it, man. so many people they move to LA and they're like I'm gonna do whatever you know I'm gonna be a model or an actor or an actress or a musician or a comedian or whatever and they start doing it but they can't make that jump from a hobby to a career that is really difficult for most people who try it I think and the thing that was a really big breakthrough to me was to let go of how I wanted other people to see me, to let go of that and instead focus more on what can I provide other people that they will value. And I'm not going to care so much about the way it makes me look, if that makes sense. Yeah. And I'll give you I'll give you a great example, like with something specifically that happened with me. I was always like, 
you know, trying to get a hold of really expensive guitars that I could then make a video about and show people. And in my mind, it was like, I'm going to be the guy with like the really nice stuff, mm. you know, and people are going to think of me and they're going to think of like, oh, this really, this guy that has like exclusive access to these things and he always plays the best stuff and it's, you know, I'm going to be the, you know, reputation of like, you know, like I review like the Bentley of guitars or something and I wanted to be associated with that. And I did some of that stuff early on. Nobody cared. <laughs> Nobody cared, right? Because what I was giving them was not something that they valued. Because people would look at those videos and they'd be like, okay, that's cool, but I'm never going to play that. Right? So it wasn't something that they could apply to their own lives. Mm. When I would do a video where it's like, hey, I bought this guitar for 200 bucks off of eBay. You can too. And if you make a couple little adjustments to this guitar, it's going to be great. And you can go play gigs with it. 200 bucks. How cool is that? I did videos like that and that stuff took off. Right. And that was the big thing. It was like, wait a minute, I'm giving people something that is valuable to them personally. Did you realize that right away or, no. or how, how, yeah. what was that period? How long did it take you to put it together? I didn't realize it right away. I mean, it was just like seeing examples like that, but again and again and again. And then after, after a while, it was like, okay, it became so obvious the direction that I should go in where it was just like to do anything else would just be stupid. Right. Yeah. And then I remember, I want to say this is in like 2017, but it was right. It was around the holiday season in winter time. And I had gotten a guitar that I bought off of Amazon for like 150 bucks and I did a review of it. And I remember I was with Cindy and we were visiting her parents. And so I was in Vegas and I was checking like on my, on my laptop, I was checking the stats of the video and it was just like, bam, 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 bam. It was like the, the video was like going nuts, you know? yeah. but it was like, yeah, like $150 guitar check it out, you know, anybody can buy this guitar kind of thing. And when I, re when I saw that video and then I realized that I was going to make a significant amount of money just from that video, I was like, okay. Bing. Yeah. Then, yeah. Then like the light bulb was like, you know, the light bulb was burning bright. It was like, okay, to, to be, you know, to be the kind of like, yeah, I'm going to be like the cool guy, you know, who's like interviewing some super obscure person that I think is important, but like no one else cares about or something like that. Like it, it became, it was like, I need to let go of that whole concept of how I want other people to see me and have it be a really narrow, like I want to be seen like one specific, really exact way. That's just like my idealized version of how people see me. I just, I'm like, I got to let go of that. I'm going to be the dude that reviews cheap guitars you know? like, <laughs> and, and, and I, but that was the thing. Like I followed that. And I think right around that time is when, because I had left Gold's Gym NoHo, and right around that time is when I was re I reconnected with you again. Mm -hmm. And then I was looking to do uh, my first music video f yeah. for myself as yeah. as a solo artist. And you had just come to mind. We ha we had done. Yeah, it was like the fall. I remember having that conversation. It was just going to be a photo shoot, which we did. Mm -hmm. And uh, after that, I like, I knew I wanted to record music, but it was just, I really didn't ha like know how things were shaping out. It was just kind of like, let me just go day by day. Yeah. And then I remember thinking like, I want to shoot a video and I, I had, I hadn't been on your channel for a while mm -hmm. and I went and checked out your channel and I was, I was blown away, honestly. Cause I remember like the conversations we'd had over the yeah. years and you doing it and even doing some shoots. And then I went to check your stuff out and I was like, wow, yeah. Like it, it was like light years, yeah, like yeah. the just improvement uh, of the quality of your work. So I was like, yeah, I need to hit them up to see if we can shoot a video. Right. But yeah, it, yeah, it was dope. I was like, wow, it, you could definitely tell the big, uh, the big exponential change. Yeah. So what, what did you do after you left uh, your job? Did anything change of how you were doing things or shooting things or with your channel? Not really, because honestly, like I'd pretty much gotten it established before then. Yeah. And so it, 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 like I was just, I felt like I was just like primed, ready to go, you know, where I was getting rid of sort of the dead weight of this day job. 
And, you know, because the amount of time that that sucks out of your schedule is, is terrible when you when you have things that are like waiting for you, right? Yeah. Um, so that was, I just felt like I know where I'm going. And at that point it was just like, now I have this extra eight hours a day or more, you know, that I can devote to that goal. Um, yeah. And that, you know, 2019 was, uh, 20, 2019 was a really big year. You know, I started working with more companies and that kind of stuff. And so, you know, big, big business year in, in a lot of ways, but it, you know, the more I, the more I think about it and, you know, you and I, we, we talk about music all the time and the music industry and this kind of thing, but there's this, um, there's this like, you know, it, it just showing up is half the battle, right? Mm -hmm. One of those things. A lot of people just, they don't even show up. Yeah. And I think that, you know, there is a, a confidence that makes the difference in the end. And just that idea that, Hey, I'm going to, I'm going to go and I'm going to do this audition or whatever, or talk to this person, you know, try and get a deal or record with them or whatever. And you, it's, yeah, it's possible that it won't work out, but you do it anyway. Right. And yeah, I mean, but, but that's, that's how it's been with pretty much all the stuff I've done. And certainly with the YouTube stuff, you know, because if you go to somebody, you know, you go to like any sensible person. You know, five, five years ago, I, I'm like, hey, I'm going to be a YouTuber. I'm going to make videos about guitars, and that's going to be my job. They'd be like, yeah, why don't you think twice <laughs> about that? You know, like, nobody would give you that advice. Right. Right. And they're like, yeah, that's a good idea. You know, nobody's going to say that. So you have to you have to be able to be like, you know what? I know it might not work out. It might be, it might crash and burn. But I'm still, you know, as long as there is the possibility at all that it could work out, I'm going to try it. I'm going to do it. And I wonder with you, like with, with you know, all, all the music stuff you've gone through, and we've talked about it a lot in the past where you were talking about you being a front man or, you know, lead singer and this kind of stuff. And it came down to just like, you had to kind of believe yeah. in yourself that you could do it. Uh, you know, because you, you could easily just stay as like, I'm going to play guitar in bands. Yeah. But that, I don't think that would be fulfilling to you. It wasn't. And right? It, it was terrifying, you right. know, it was terrifying to take that leap. It, a part of me knew I could, but I hadn't done it before. And then splitting up with my ex-wife and feeling like my life is in shambles, it was terrifying. But it, it's that thing again, like I knew, like I believed it and I knew that I had to show up. Mm -hmm. I had no idea if it would work, but I knew I had to do it. So that's what it was, man. It was just like constantly just do it, just show up, just put. And that's just yeah. like when I hit you up, when we had that conversation, I didn't feel like doing it, man. You know, I didn't. But it's again, I'm going to book myself this thing. I'm going to book myself this gig. I don't have any songs, but I'm going to do it. Right. And you're, yeah, man, you just got to believe and then take action and mm -hmm. then keep taking action. And uh, through action, yeah, you get the things that, okay, that didn't work, but this did. And then you're confident, you start to find your footing. But yeah, I think we, and from the conversations we've had, like everybody feels that at one point or another. So if we can keep that in mind, it's like, yeah, you can, you can, you can do it. It might not work out how you want, right? but that you got to just be open to that and trust that you following your passions and your, your loves will lead you down the right path. And I think for both of us, we can say, like, it's led us to a great place, you yeah. know, and, and just to, of continuing to expand on that. Um, yeah, I, I think that, you know, something you just mentioned there, like, <clears throat> what you start out seeing yourself doing is not always what you end up doing, but it might ultimately get you what you wanted, always wanted in the end. Right. And I think that's, I think that for musicians, most artistic type of people, types of people, I think that is, that's really, really true. Maybe not everybody, but you know, it's like, if you're going to be a musician, it's like, Hey, I want to be a, you know, a guitar player. It's like, well, okay, there's a lot of guitar players, you know, and you really, and, and there's a lot of great guitar players. Amazing guitar yeah. players. So if you want to stand <laughs> out you got to put in a lot of work. Yeah. It's like, Hey, maybe, uh, not a lot of accordion players, 
might not be your favorite instrument, but you know, hey, if you're going to be a rich and successful musician, how important is it what instrument you play? Right. You know, if you're out there playing those big shows and stages and tours, and you've got the big house and the, you know, the jacuzzi in the closet or whatever, and like it's. And that's challenging, isn't it? Because yeah. the ego, like you said, wants to be like, yeah. but this is how I want to be this identified. This is how I appear. Yeah, this is, yeah. And similar, man, and I think like right around when my relationship was, was uh, almost over, I remember she mentioned, she made a comment about a guitarist and it really deflated me. Really? Because it made, it made... Oh, like he's so much better than you or something? <laughs> like it made me have that realization though of like... Okay. There are a lot of guitarists here. Yeah. Uh, and although I've been playing guitar basically my whole musical career, I just had that feeling like that's not it. Mm -hmm. Because for a while, man, like the, the summer, the spring and through the summer of 2018, I just decided to go down that route mentally of like, okay, guitarist. And like mm -hmm. maybe I can position myself. And, and the more I did it, it just was like it wasn't working. And I just felt... It didn't feel right. And then mm. with that comment, even though it hurt, it did make me think things differently. Yeah. And I'm like, I love writing songs. I've always felt like I'm a great writer. It's just I was so insecure, though, to, mm. to sing it. But at that moment, I just felt like, I know I can do this. And I just like, I'm not going to do the guitar thing. And that's why even for a while, I, until just recently, uh, I started, I've started to pick up the guitar again to play and here and even in videos right yeah but it wasn't that i didn't want to for a while but for me i told myself i'm not gonna do that right because this is what i got to get myself used to doing yeah. like you know the lead singer and the front man and again man even going through like lessons getting vocal lessons and all like committed to like all right we're gonna go down this route mm -hmm. you know but yeah it was realizing like i thought it was gonna be the guitarist yeah and then even starting as a, like a solo artist, at first I wasn't, it was more of a band. I was still a little yeah. timid to, to announce that, mm -hmm. you know, but as it progressed and it progressed and it progressed and in a way though, it was organic too. how it just sort of everything in life put me to the forefront and, and same thing. It was just like, okay, this is obvious here. I yeah. have to go down this route. Yeah. And then now then I pivoted to like, okay, then how can I get better? What work do I need to do then? But yeah, similar, similar thing. Yeah, but I, yeah, I think too many musicians, they cling too tightly to that con that sort of idealized concept of how they want to see themselves. Yeah. And even when it is obvious that they should go down this other path, it's just a little bit, it's a little bit to the right of what the path you thought you were on. You know, it's close, but. Even when it's become obvious, they reject it or they, they sabotage themselves in some way because it's like, well, no, I, you know, I wanted to have green hair instead of red <laughs> hair. And so I'm not, I'm not going to do that. You know, yeah, I, you know, and, well, and, and this is not to say that I've made great decisions along. I've made a ton of mistakes, you know, but at the same time, I, I see a lot of people making that mistake. What would you say has helped you any tools, whether it's mentally mm -hmm. or or habits that have, because it is challenging in the arts to, to become a success, successfully, financially successful. Yeah. What, what, what are like tools that you've, that have you used to, to help you stay inspired or motivated and, and to press forward? Well, a big one is I really like to work with other people. And uh, I like to, you know, whether it's something I'm directly involved in, like I'm making a YouTube video and I want to collaborate with another YouTuber, like I do that stuff and I really enjoy that. And even it has problems, you know, there's downsides to it too, but even working through those problems in a way is kind of enjoyable. Yeah. So that right there, but, but even stuff that doesn't directly involve me where I'm more behind the scenes, um, I... I really enjoy that stuff too and it keeps me from getting too like I mean it, it's really helpful in a lot of ways because you know to be totally honest I'm 38 right and a big chunk of my audience is like teens or something right so I don't want if I just sit at home and like I'm watching my same old videos and watching my favorite movie from like 1998 or something you know <laughs> it's very easy for me to get out of touch with people about what's interesting to them and what they want so by continuing to work with other people, that it helps 
I don't know, keep me up on what people are interested in, that kind of thing. Yeah. So that's been really helpful. Um, I think a huge thing, though, is always just to come back to, I want to create something that other people find valuable. That's kind of my number one uh, thing that I try to remember mm. when I'm working on stuff. And, and I mean, it helps in a lot of ways, but it also helps me to continue to try new things because like especially in, in in youtube there's a pattern that you see people go through where they have the first few videos that become like really successful where they're able to make that jump to like okay now i'm doing this full time they try to keep recreating those same mm. videos over and over and over again right yeah but you, you shoot yourself in the foot if you do that I mean, it's very much a template I, I feel like in yeah. a lot of social media yeah you know and yeah. but you're right even music though right like sure they try to write the find... same song again yeah 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 so tempting yeah um what are you doing these days as far as the gym goes i know you said bodybuilding like yeah. how much of a role does that play uh in, in your life today yeah so bodybuilding i mean i i love bodybuilding and i, I will always love it and it's it has been and it continues to be a huge part of my life where it's at now is I'm a lot more concerned with, I want to, I want to be able to do the things I want and perform well in whatever part of life that is for a long time. Health, right? Yeah. So longevity yeah. is a big thing for me now. Health. And to, you know, to be honest, a lot of that comes from being in the music industry and seeing people as they get older and they are not doing well. And, right. And that's scary, you know. Um, and so trying to avoid that. Um, but, but you know, like there's just other things that I really enjoy doing. Uh, you know, I like going hiking and that kind of stuff. And, and you know, and I still have to, I still have to carry amps every now and then, right? So <laughs> it's like... You know, a four by twelve cab can weigh a hundred pounds, <laughs> yeah. man. You got to carry it. You got to carry that up the stairs sometimes. <laughs> so yeah, it's just, it's just you know. I mean, obviously, I like. You know, I still I still hit shots in the mirror every every yeah, once yeah. in a while. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's for me. It's become a lot more about. Uh, you know, I want to make this last. Right. Same man. Yeah. It, it's it's. I think me us that are in 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 the sport. I think that just comes with age too mm -hmm. if you're wise yeah of realizing and then too for me that was a mindset i had to alter and it was challenging because for the longest it was just like big 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 sure, yeah. bodybuilding but of like being wiser of how i'm lifting and understanding hey i don't weigh this weight like i used to yeah and same thing like making sure longevity um do you have any favorite lift or a memorable like, oh, I benched 500 or squatted such and such or anything like that? I mean, I hate to say it, but the ones that are memorable were like times I got injured or something. <laughs> like one time I was squatting like 515. Yeah. And I cracked my sternum. Whoa. Like right here. And I, was, I had a buddy. Just like? Yeah, back squat. Oh, wow. And I'm up like that. And I was, I was down and I was going up in the lift. And I had a buddy who was spotting me and he, and like, I felt and heard like a, you know, noise like from right here. And I didn't know what I'd done, but he heard, like he's standing behind me and he and heard, heard something it. pop and he, and, and you know, he's like, Oh, your neck, bro. You know, something like that. And it, it turned out that I like cracked my sternum, like it, like ripped it in half. Whoa. So that was memorable. You know, Another time, I think I was also squatting, I blew a capillary out of my eye. And, and that's one of those things where you, you don't realize it when it happens, yeah. but then you look in the mirror and it's like all this blood in your eye and everything. And, and it was- Wait, so did the stern thing heal on its own or did you have to go for anything? No, it, it healed on its own, but I had to be, wow. I mean, I, I had to be just like doing nothing for like a few months for it to heal. Wow. Yeah. What about your favorite bodybuilder? Oh, uh, there's a guy from, uh, I mean, he's retired now, but he was a nineties, early two thousands bodybuilder. I think he was from like the Czech Republic or something like mm -hmm. Pavel Yabloniki. Yeah. And that dude was like paper thin skin. He had the most, he wore glasses, right? 
Did he wear glasses? Well, when he was not on. Yeah. Right. When he was not. When on, he was on lifting, stage. like these yeah. sort of thin, classy-looking yeah, glasses. Yeah yeah. yeah. yeah, but he. Um, he, I don't know. Just his look. He had that sort of like super dry, like Dorian Yates kind of vibe. But he just. Like every show, he would he would show up like that, and he looked great. He had a very very long career. Also, he mm -hmm. had a, like a twenty year comp competitive career. Yeah, and he had a few wins. You know, I mean, he wasn't like he never placed just like top three in the Olympia or anything like that. But uh, yeah, I just I always loved his look, and uh, plus plus he had this sort of like kind of mysterious vibe about him because he's like he's from this weird country that I don't know anything about yeah and there was like I think they played into that man because yeah, like yeah. The heat, there wasn't a lot of press about him like right. that yeah 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 and th that guy was always a favorite of mine but then there's people um, you know more more well known people I mean you know, Dorian Lee Haney Dorian Yates those guys that that's kind of for me that era of you know maybe late 80s 90s bodybuilders I think that was you know, Flex Wheeler, guys like yeah. that. That, that. That was, to me, that was the ultimate, like, um, aesthetic, but big at the same time. And you, you can watch these old videos of, like, uh, like Flex Wheeler and, and guys like that, you know, and they're, like, it's, like, early 90s, you know, and they're, like, you know, Mercedes convertible with the top down, cruising with, like, the cutoff, yep. you know, like, all this stuff, like, oh, it's, like, it's the ultimate vibe. Yeah. yeah, yeah I mean, yeah. Th that, that was it, right? Yeah. Like, same thing. I was like, yeah. I got to go there. Yeah. yeah. They're driving the cars. They're yeah. big. They, they're living the life. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was like, it was, it was like a 24 hour hip hop video. Or something. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Well, thanks for being on, man. Of course, like, dude. Ha! <laughs>